Okay, before you read week five, let's take a look at what you are going to be reading. We're going to read uh, 1 Thessalonians, and uh, also we're going to read 2 Thessalonians, which is just a short letter, and we're going to read start reading 1 Corinthians. So let's just take a look at this so we kind of get a visual of this from the map. Um, in, in Acts chapter 15, uh, Paul's in Jerusalem, and we read that uh, last week. And uh, he's in Jerusalem for the council. And Paul had a few journeys, a few missionary journeys. The first missionary journey that he took was in this area. And that was in, uh, we saw that in Acts 13 and 14. And what the map we're looking at right now is the is the map of his second journey. So he starts in, in Jerusalem. And the second journey we read about in Acts 15 through 18 and, uh, and so we're going to read that in week 11. But for now, uh, we're going to just take a look that he leaves Jerusalem in Acts 15. He comes up <clears throat> He comes up through here. He ends up in this area in Galatia. And we just read Galatians last week. And then, and then he ends up coming over here to Thessalonica. And, and he spends three weeks in Thessalonica. He starts a church there, shares the gospel. Some people come to faith. And then after that, after a few weeks, he comes back down here to Corinth. Now, while Paul was in Corinth, he wrote the letter back to the Thessalonians. And there are two themes I want us to look at uh, in 1 Thessalonians and then one theme in 2 Thessalonians. The first uh, first theme in 1 Thessalonians, starting in verse 4, he says, For we know, brothers and sisters, loved by God, that God has chosen you because our gospel came to you. Remember, he just was there, preached the gospel, and it came not simply with words, but with power, with the Holy Spirit, with deep conviction, Maybe you felt that when you first came to faith in Jesus, we first read 101, just this deep conviction. And, uh, and, and Paul is explaining that in, in, in his letter back to the Thessalonians. He says, you know how we lived among you for your sake, even, it was, even though it was just for a few weeks. He says, you became imitators of us in the Lord, for you welcomed the message, the gospel. Um, we have it in our form. We have it in the Foundations booklet in 101, that those five pages are the gospel. Uh, the message of the gospel, in the midst of, here's the first theme, in the midst of severe suffering. So we see this theme of suffering. You know, the early church 2,000 years ago is different than the church today. Uh, when when people came to faith in Christ, sometimes that meant they suffered for the gospel. They, they, they couldn't just receive it and everything was good. Uh, sometimes that means they went through some persecution. And we see that theme in 1 Thessalonians. But he says, you still welcome the message in the midst of severe suffering, you welcomed it with joy given by the Holy Spirit. And remember, uh, at principle number four in 201, you can't know or grow without the Holy Spirit. So we'll see some of those themes jumping up. Pay attention to the theme specifically of suffering in First Thessalonians. And then in, in, in chapter four, we see the second theme. He says, and as for other matters, he says, we instructed you while we were there, we instructed you how to live in order to please God as in fact you are living. So this is principle number one. Find out what pleases God and do it. And Paul's kind of looking back. He doesn't want to forget about this church he started. He writes back to them and says, guys, don't forget that we should live to please God. And he's saying, we're, we're urging you to do so more and more, to continue to grow, to continue to build up in your life. He says in verse two, for you know what instructions we gave you by the authority of the Lord Jesus and so he, they gave instructions on, on how to live their lives as Christians. We, we would call that 201. If you haven't taken 201, you should make sure to go back and take 201. And those are 10 principles for living and how to live your life uh, more and more to please God. And uh, he says in verse 3, it's God's will that you should be sanctified. That means be made holy That you should avoid, look at what he says, avoid sexual immorality. That you should learn to control your own body in a way that's holy and honorable, not in passionate lust like the pagans who don't know God. Because remember, they used to be pagans. They used to live that way just a few weeks ago. And he's saying, remember that this is one of the principles is this isn't how God wants us to live our lives. Um, He says you shouldn't wrong or take advantage of one another. And he says the Lord will punish all those who commit such sins and we warned you about this before. He says, For God didn't call us to be impure, but to live a holy life. Therefore, he says, if anyone rejects this instruction, you're not rejecting me, Paul says. You're rejecting God. 
and, and you're rejecting the very God who gives you his Holy Spirit. There's principle four again. So we notice this in 1 Thessalonians 4. We notice this instruction that Paul is giving uh, to the Thessalonians to live a holy life. It may, maybe he had heard that, that there was they were having some problems just a few weeks later. You know, they put their faith in Jesus, and a few weeks later they're living in a way that he hears about, and he, he writes back to me. He says, hey, guys, don't forget. Let's not be impure. Let's not be lustful. Let's not be immoral. And what a great lesson that is for us today, that we should continue to live our lives like that today. Uh, and then And so those are some themes that we have in 1 Thessalonians uh, the persecution theme, and then in Second Thessalonians, the living to please God theme, or sorry, in the second part of First Thessalonians. And then in Second Thessalonians, you're going to notice the theme of the second coming of Christ. Jesus is going to return, and Paul had told them that, and they were starting to wonder about that, and they were starting to think that he was going to return so quickly that they didn't really have to worry about how they lived their lives in the here and now. And Paul wrote Second Thessalonians to kind of address that and say, hey guys, He's coming, he's coming back, but um, he's, he's, he's coming back. Who knows when he's going to come back? We don't know when he's going to come back. So in the meantime, live your lives to please God and, and go about your daily lives. So, so he writes 1 Thessalonians and Corinth, and then in 2 Thessalonians, a, f- a few months later, he follows up 1 Thessalonians, and, uh, and we see what he writes there. And then the last thing he does is after, after he leaves Thessalonica, he goes, to, he goes down here to Corinth, and here's Corinth down here. Um, if you need some perspective, here's Italy here. So this is Greece. And he shows up in Corinth and he spends some time in Corinth. And then he leaves Corinth and he goes across over here into Ephesus. We're going to read Ephesians later. And while he's in Ephesus, he writes the letter back to Corinth. So while he was in Corinth, he writes the letter back to the Thessalonians, First and Second Thessalonians. And while he's in Ephesus, he writes the letter back to Corinth. And we're going to see that uh, in Corinthians, and one of the things you're going to notice in Corinthians is he he talks a lot about um, he talks a lot about the troubles that they had as a church, sort of the immaturity and the problems that they had as a church. Uh, Corinth was a wealthy but wicked pagan city, and so the Christians in Corinth were surrounded by this this culture that was not godly at all, and you could see it begins to infiltrate the church. And so Paul writes this letter back to Corinth sort of encouraging them and warning them to to live godly in spite of the culture that they live in. So w- what a great letter that is for us today, because 2,000 years later, we can certainly relate to that. So pay attention to that as you start reading 1 Corinthians, the first few chapters, and then next week we'll even continue with the rest of 1 Corinthians. So pay attention to those things as you read and, uh, and could just continue to build up on your foundation as you study God's Word.